Israel, a nice country, lots and lots of history, very technologically advanced, some incredible scenery, and the food, out of this world. But diversity, maybe not the first thing that comes to mind for most people when they think about Israel. But that's a common misconception about this young country. You see, Israel has welcomed a dizzying number of immigrants from nearly every corner of the world. Religious and non-religious, Jewish and non-Jewish, light-skinned and dark-skinned, babies to bubbies. So how did this immigration nation come to be? How did a young, poor, and vulnerable country cope with that influx? And how has the diversity of that influx shaped the Israel of today? Israel is a multicultural democracy. It's 20% Arab and nearly 80% Jewish. That means there are really two big diversity stories here. One story is about Jews from all around the world coming together, and the other story is about Jews and non-Jews figuring out how to live together in the Jewish state. But just as non-Jews in Israel include Muslims, and Christians, and Bedouins, and Druze, and even Circassians, Israeli Jews are dizzyingly diverse too. They come from over 100 countries, meaning that most of them spoke all kinds of different languages before learning Hebrew. Only 600,000 Jews lived in Israel in 1948. Remarkably, and with lightning speed, Israel absorbed 360,000 Holocaust survivors in the 1940s, 850,000 Jews from Arab and Muslim countries, mostly in the 1950s, nearly 90,000 Ethiopian Jews since the 1980s, and another 1 million Russians since the 1990s. That's like a lot of people. These refugees, often running from anti-Semitism, were running towards a Jewish home, making what is called Aliyah. Aliyah means ascend, going up. The term captures Jews longing for Zionism for nearly 2,000 years. In the last 75 years, it describes the phenomenon of Jews coming to Israel and making the modern Jewish state their home. Immigration isn't just something that Israel allows. It's fundamental to what Israel is. The philosopher Eliezer Schweid called Israel an immigrant-absorbing state, and that's reflected in Israel's laws and policies. The famous Law of Return, for example, offers every Jew born anywhere automatic citizenship. Providing refuge in their ancient homeland after centuries of homelessness and oppression is built into the very fabric of this country, and it goes beyond just welcoming immigrants. Israel organizes its economy, its education system, its entire society to integrate these immigrants. Of course, absorbing immigrants is stressful and never seamless. Holocaust survivors in the 40s were mocked for not fighting back against the Nazis. Jews from Arab lands in the 50s were mocked for being too religious and not Western enough. And North American immigrants were bullied for being too Western. Yet, every immigrant who arrives by boat or by plane reminds Israelis who they are and what the Zionist project is all about. For many Jews from Arab and Muslim lands, moving to Israel in the 1950s was hard. It meant leaving countries some had lived in for centuries, and sometimes leaving great wealth behind. We are Arab Jews, many of them still say. Clumped together by Israelis as Mizrahim, Jews from the East, some felt compelled to establish their own political party in the 1980s, Shas, to demand equality. Nearly 40 years after the Jews arrived from Muslim lands, Jews started arriving from the Soviet Union. In February 1986, after being imprisoned in the Soviet Union's prison system, the Gulag, for nine years, simply for speaking up and demanding the right to move to Israel, Natan Sharansky arrived in Jerusalem. That night, ecstatic Israelis carried him to the front of the Kotel, the Western Wall. Sharansky recalled, from an ocean of hatred, I find myself in an ocean of love. Having left a country where only the government knows what must be done, I arrive in a society where everybody but the government knows what must be done. Here, every taxi driver, every kibbutznik, every shopkeeper is, if not prime minister, then at least foreign and defense ministers combined. Finally, while some Ethiopian Jews have faced discrimination and outright racism, more and more are proud Israelis, like Sharon Shalom, an Ethiopian Jew born Zaudi Tesfai. Sharon Shalom walked over two months from Ethiopia to Sudan and arrived in Israel in 1982 as one of 8,000 Jews Operation Moses brought to Israel on a massive airlift. Today, Sharon Shalom is a rabbi for a congregation of mostly European-born Holocaust survivors. 
As a child, he asked his grandfather one day, Grandfather, how old are you? His grandfather replied, I'm eight years old. Shalom was astonished. Eight years old? How can that be? The grandfather explained that when he arrived in the land of Israel, he began counting the years of his life anew. Today, more and more immigrants come from free, prosperous countries, like me, an alia of choice from Western democracies, not anti-Semitic autocracies. That choice to move to the Middle East, often leaving the relevant comforts of your home, trust me, can be tough. The linguistic, social, professional, and cultural adjustments can be very, very challenging, especially when dealing with the famous or infamous Israeli bluntness. With all this chaos and complexity, with all this immigration and absorption, diversity and difference, it's hard to believe Israel functions at all, let alone that it has grown economically, socially and technologically. So what's its secret? First, frequent attacks from the outside often unite Israel. So when terrorist attack or bombs fall or natural disasters occur, a tight-knit society becomes even tighter. Second, Israelis may have many different mother tongues, but there is one common Jewish language. Beyond the words itself, it's a language of a shared past, a shared Bible, shared roots in the land, shared holidays, shared values, and a shared sense of family. Finally, there is the Zionist idea, the Zionist dream, Liot Am Choshvi Beltzeno, the dream to be a free people in the Jewish homeland after 2,000 years of exile. Wave after wave of immigrants has built Israel as the fulfillment of that dream, persevering through whatever challenges arose along the way. In many countries today, immigration is seen as a problem. Yet, Israel continues to be an immigrant-absorbing state. And most Israelis know it is this remarkable diversity that the country has stood for, which has created such a successful, multicultural, democratic society.